um, I think it, you know it's terrific the work that you guys are doing and, and pulling these conversations together. And I've certainly sort of seen in the background a lot of this that's going on. So I've made a note of 10th of December. I'm, I'm uh, I definitely hope to be on that that call. Um, and it's, I was just picking up really on a point that something that you said around um, the role of the the trust really and what's going on in and around the region and. Um, there's other conversations that are taking place that you support those and then but obviously you're doing your own stuff that you want to carry on this through and it's it's all really I think it's something that I'm kind of seeing quite a lot now across the region and I kind of feel like whilst I kind of agree that that, that it should be it feels to me like somebody really needs to take some sort of strategic hold of some of this health and mm. particularly around mental health initiatives and just start to add a real sense of direction and purpose. And, and the reason I say that, because I kind of feel like we're in a, a really disjointed place like that. Lots of fantastic activity going on around health. Lots of fantastic uh, stuff going on around well-being, But it just feels so siloed. And we now sit in a city that's got, I think someone said to me the other day, that our trust is a 500 million pound turnover trust. I don't know if that's, I don't know if I'm getting that right, but it, it was quite a substantial figure. We're in a city that's also got um, a, um, a university that um, uh, uh, that trains nurses um, quite significantly for the region, and develops nurses. We're in a city that has a £40 million brand new health innovation campus. Um, 20 miles down the road, there's a, a £30 million med tech campus now at, at UCLan. And... As a, as a kind of, as someone in the city who's born and raised in this city, I'm kind of looking around and thinking, crikey, given that there's only 120,000 people in the whole region, we've got a, there is lots of asset there. There's so much there. Why have we still got massive challenges around mental health? Why have we still got all these things happening? And it feels a little bit to me like, what is pulling all this together, all these assets, all these, all this great goodwill and fantastic work that people are doing? But what's missing? Why, why, is, why is it missing? And what that is, and I, and I don't know. And I, and I kind of throw that open a little bit to, to everybody. I, I'm really, I, you know, I'm looking forward to getting involved in these calls and stuff and, and, and adding hopefully what I hope will be some, some decent contribution. But that, I suppose that's my question really, or, you know what, what what are people's thoughts yeah it's, it's a really really good question and if we had the answer to that we'd be able to solve absolutely everything wouldn't we I, I, and this is it this yeah. is i'm not expecting an answer to no, it I know, well, I know, but... I know, yeah but and, and i suppose but for years and years now we've been we've been trying to build those those better relationships and there is so much going on and it is so siloed and i suppose it's over the past year or so those relationships are building more and more and I suppose that's what we've got to do we've got to keep keep building them so for example it was Deb's talking earlier and I've written her details I'm thinking we definitely need to, to link up with what's going on there and with the universities um, and I suppose if anything the COVID it's been horrific but it's it's really brought partnerships together a little bit more and um, so it's just how we can strengthen those and keep keep moving forwards because you're absolutely right we, we have to. I think I think I just said from a city council perspective um, we don't actually have responsibility for for well-being and health and and we're just trying to do what we can do as a, 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 city, from a city council perspective as i say we have our statutory core stuff well uh, we all have we all have responsibility for yeah, it don't we yeah yeah and and my my approach um was well outside of that and you'll be aware that we have huge limitations in, in terms of budgets and what's happened with austerity we had 10 years of austerity and we've now got covid things are not looking great but the council does have a role, as do other anchor institutions, you know, the bigger institutions like health, in terms of, OK, we might not have responsibility directly, but we're a community um, and, and we need to support each other as a community. So that's that's, you know, that's what we're kind of doing from our end. The other bit, and I'll plug it, is, is you know, there is a consultation at the moment going on around a Morecambe Bay Unitary Authority. Um, and, and, you know, the... Uh, uh, just as we, we have huge limitations around health, we have huge limitations around climate action. We don't have transport. So there is a consultation, you know, um, I'll, I'll dig up the link for that in a minute and I'll maybe stick that in the chat. 
Um, there is a proposal for, for you know, South Lakes, Barrow and, and Lancaster District to come together and to take on these responsibilities. We'd have a better shot at it working. But I would say um, we'd, we'd only have a better shot of it if we recognise that the, 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 the direction needs to come from the community. You know, it's, it's not about these big institutions, um, you know, saying, oh, we're going to we're going to, you know, solve things for you. There needs to be a change in mindset. And I'm, I'm reasonably encouraged that that's kind of happening. Alistair, Alistair, it's Dawn. Um, I'm going to interrupt you because I want to help Michael out with timings. Um, and I've got Steve, I've got Debs, and then I've got Kerry indicated that they wanted to speak. And this is at the point where people, including me, get agitated because I want to listen and I want to speak. I actually don't want to right now, but I know Steve does and Debs and Kerry and now I've got Michael. So I'm actually going to make Michael go first, which is out of order because we're running over. Yeah, it's just a point of order, really, in that um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm allowing this to happen because um, you know, it, it's an important conversation to have. So we can give it another five minutes if necessary. We, we can you know, we'll cut the break down to five minutes instead of 15 and I'll, I'll chop five minutes off my, uh, you know, I don't want it to, to take over, but let's give it another five minutes. Right. Yeah. Ma uh, Michael? <laughs> Michael? Yeah. People can take their own breaks, can't they? They can be autonomous and just go off for their own breaks. We'll have a four more one for five minutes, but can we, so that's great. So five more minutes, Steve, Debs, Kerry. Okay. Right, I'm Steve. going to say something. I've got to go. I've got to leave. Anna will know about why I'm, why I'm going away. But the the um, the problem with with all sorts of these things, and the fact that almost nothing appears to be moving, particularly to do with the um, uh, the, the medical centre, huge huge medical research centre that's been set up in 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 Lancaster, Lancaster University, is going absolutely nowhere. The the one uh, in Preston. Is, is not doing particularly well either, so that it is, is going somewhere, um, is all because of the, the funding that's going to it and the private money that, that is just not appearing in this particular year. I don't think the one in Lancaster is going to go very far. They're going to have to spread that one. Never mind, never mind. The, uh, I, I think you're, you're doing very, very well here, Claire. If you get all the information together, some of it could be done by council, some of it could be done by the NHS, some of it could be, could be done by individual people. So good luck to you. And uh, just get the information about what people want and how they want it and spread it out as to who can do what. I think that's, that's a, a really good idea. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have to leave. <laughs> but thank you very much for everybody. It sounds really good. Um, Right. Hi. Hi. Debs. Um, I just wanted to, um, yeah, I, what Dan was saying really echoes, to be honest. And I was kind of thinking why there's not a central hub or a directory for the Lancaster City Council um, for people to, because we've got some amazing practitioners out there that are doing such fantastic work from an alternative point of view. And I think going forward, we, we really need some sort of, you know, sit, direction where the members of the public can look at um, where they can, you know, look for something. You know, are they looking for osteopathy? Are they looking for whatever it might be? But kind of just, just I don't know if you can make them. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if, you, if you can um, maybe take that back to whoever you. Who deals with that? Yeah, so um, just to feed back on that, I know that there is um, apps and a, a directory of service that is being developed. Um, I suppose that the difficulty is as soon as it's developed, it's out of date and it has to it has to have someone keeping monitoring it. But I know that is it is on the cards. And I suppose what's going to push that forward, is like, like you say, as we've um, been going out and asking people, oh, what matters to you? What, what would make us happy and healthier? We have had quite a bit of feedback saying uh, we need to know what's out there. There's loads exactly. of great loads of great stuff we just don't know what's out there or how to access it and I suppose I that's the power of what we're doing 
we need to sit down we need to look at all of that and, and think well that's what the people want let's make it happen Let, let's let's speed up with what what we're doing and I suppose that's the point of everything it's for, it's for our partners to have access to this information so it's not I suppose we often when we want to change something we go out and ask people what matters to them and um, but this is if anyone's going to be doing anything they can just automatically tap in and, and, and have that information at the fingertips but mm. yeah absolutely we've, we've heard that yeah great Oh, I'm glad that it's on, on with anyway. Yeah. That's good to know. Thank you. Kerry, Kerry, you're on next. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, apologies. I wasn't asking to give feedback, actually. I was applauding something Alistair had said. That was my reaction. <laughs> and it looked like I was had my hand up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it is my presentation next. So is that all right for me to go ahead with that? Yeah, nobody else has got their hand raised, yeah. so yeah. Okay, so I say presentation, but... Um, so, just for you... Um, yeah, go on. Yeah, I just, just, just to round and wrap that off, um, if you want to put anything in the chat to carry on this conversation, do, because Alistair and uh, uh, Claire, we have been, from our part, for the Health and Wellbeing Group, we have spent a lot of time asking ourselves the question, how do we get what we're doing visible to guys like you? Um, and, you know, it's been a long-standing agenda item of this group. So um, uh, can, can, can we not lose sight of that? I know, I know Charles won't lose sight of that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, just to right. so, again that you welcome to oh, sit on the group. Sorry? It was just to emphasize again that the, the communications um, group is open. You, you're welcome to come and sit on that. Um, anybody. Do, you want, do you want to put the details in the chat? Is there a link or something? That... If anyone just wants to contact myself or Alistair, that, that right. 